Graphically, the zeros of a function are the places where the graph crosses the x-axis. This function has one, two, three zeros. We can see that one of the zeros is exactly positive one. The other two zeros are not as obvious. In fact, they are irrational and in some functions can be very difficult to find. Newton's method provides a way for approximating these hard to find zeros. Newton's method is fairly simple, but it requires calculus. In this video, I will describe Newton's method and apply it to approximate the zeros of this function f of x. Let's begin. When using Newton's method to approximate a zero of a function, the first step is to make an estimate of the value of the zero. Here, I will be approximating the zero that is between x equals two and x equals three. I'll approximate this zero to be 2.8 and call it x1. When, you, when using Newton's method, do your best to make a good guess when choosing the approximate value for your zero. However, Newton's method will work so long as your estimate is closer to the zero you are trying to approximate than any other zero of the function. For example, if I would have chose 1.3 as my approximation, Newton's method would provide me with the zero that is at x equals one and not the zero I'm looking for, which is between two and three. Here, 2.8, my estimate is clearly closer to the zero that I'm trying to find. So I will now move on to step two. Step two is where the calculus comes in, namely differential calculus. Completing this step will require you to find a derivative. Step two takes the estimate that you originally made in step one and improves it using the formula x sub n plus one, which will be a new better estimate equals x sub n, your original estimate, minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. Our original estimate was 2.8. We're gonna call that x sub one. That stands for our first estimate. Substituting that for x sub n in the formula, we'll say that our second better estimate, x sub two, is equal to 2.8 minus f of 2.8 over f prime of 2.8. Let's recall that the function we're trying to estimate the zero of was f of x equals x to the third minus three x squared plus two. And first evaluating f of 2.8, we'll substitute a value of 2.8 for each occurrence of x in this function. And that yields about 0 0.432. The derivative of f of x, the derivative of f of x can be found using the power rule. The derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. The derivative of 3x squared is 6x. The derivative of two is zero. So f prime of x, the derivative of the original function is three x squared minus six x. Next, we'll evaluate f prime of 2.8. So we'll substitute for x in the derivative, the value of 2.8, our first estimate, and that is 6.72. So now that we know f of x and f prime of x, Let's substitute that into the formula. X sub two, a second better estimate, will be our original estimate, 2.8 minus the result of the estimate in the original function f of x over our original estimate in the derivative, 2.8 minus 0 0.432 over 6.72 is about 2.7357, at least to four decimal places. This value is closer to the actual zero of the function than our original estimate of 2.8 was. We can continue using Newton's method to get an even better estimate. Step three in Newton's method is to basically repeat step two using your improved better estimate of 2.7357. We're calling this x sub two because it, it was our second approximation 
the one that was improved upon when we used Newton's method the first time. Recall our original function and the derivative that we previously found. And we'll go ahead and find a third, even better approximation of the zero by substituting for x2, 2.7357. This result, f of x sub 2, f of 2.7357 over f prime of 2.7357 is equal to the fraction you see on the screen here. I've rounded these off to six decimal places. The more decimal places you use, the more accurate your approximation will be. Depends on the level of precision desired. The result of this expression is 2.7321. This value represents our third estimate for the zero of the function and is closer to the actual zero than our first two approximations were. At this point, you're basically going to repeat what I just did as many times as you would like. Each time will get you closer to the actual irrational zero of the function. Oftentimes, you'll see the work for this set up in a table as you see on the screen now. The original estimate was 2.8. Whenever you evaluate 2.8 in the original function, you get 0.432 as I did in step one, and then the, when you evaluate 2.8 in the derivative, you'll get 6.72. And then the work that I did in step one gives a second better estimate of 2.7357 x sub 2, our second estimate of 2.7357, was again applied to the formula for Newton's method that I discussed. And I found a better estimate, my third x sub 3 better estimate was 2.7321. Moving ahead and applying Newton's method a third time, well, when I Substitute 2.7321 into the original function, I'll get 0 0.003. And when I substitute my, the third estimate into the derivative, that yields 6.005. To four decimal places, that quotient is zero. To four decimal places, there's no difference between the third and what would be the fourth approximation of the zero. If your estimate requires you to be accurate to four decimal places, Newton's method has found the zero of the function. To four decimal places, that zero is 2.7321. Because the zero is irrational, this is not the exact value of the zero. If you were using a calculator or a spreadsheet and rounding to more than four decimal places, you would see a difference between the third and fourth approximation. Newton's method can be used to find the zero as precisely as you would need it. In this case, if I'm looking for four decimal places, I found it. The zero between x equals two and x equals three, three in the original function to four decimal places by Newton's method is 2.7321.